Welcome to Sweetheart Survivals Podcast number one. First I'm, one ever. Yep. Yeah, I'm Justin. I'm Sharla. And you can't see us. <laughs> Which is weird. <laughs> uh, we decided to try to do a podcast for a number of reasons. We've started listening to more podcasts recently, uh, which we never really used to before. Yeah, and they seem like the people who are doing them are having a lot of fun. So we decided to try one of our own. Yep. Plus, we've recently gone on a summer vacation to the Boardroom Game Cafe in Halifax, Nova Scotia. In Canada. Yep. And uh, we did little a little video, our summer special where we took little clips of us describing the games that we just played, but we really, really didn't have a lot of time to talk about them. No, our camera really didn't have a lot of batteries to work yeah. with. Plus it was noisy. Exactly. Yeah. So we thought this can be a companion to our uh, summer special, where we get to blab about the games we played that day in more detail. Sounds awesome. Awesome. So what was the first game that we played? The first game we played, and we tried to play all new games that we never tried before. This is true. And that we have always heard a lot of stuff about. Yep. And we just needed to try them. Absolutely. First one was Splendor. Splendor. I had no interest in this game, really. None at all? <laughs> a little tiny bit. I was curious to try it because there had been a lot of buzz around it. Mm -hmm. But it didn't look like a game that I was like, ooh, that looks fun. I've always wanted to try it. Yes. And mainly, I have to say... It is because some of the buzz that was around it. Yeah. But it's also a set collection game. Yep. Which I like set collection games. Yes. So why not try it? Yep. And what did you think of it? I really enjoyed it. One thing I was really surprised about that I don't remember ever hearing anyone talk about was how those discs that the gem stickers are on are incredibly heavy. Yeah. Like not just, ooh, these are a little heavy. They are incredibly heavy, heavy. Yeah. yeah and like they click and clunk together and they make all sorts of cool noises which is a nice yeah yeah to add to the game kind of tactile they feel solid like they Subs have a presence yeah substantial yeah we have the uh the uh, metal coins for tuscany and i kept thinking there's like a coin of metal stuck in here somewhere because <laughs> it's that heavy really yeah well they were heavy yeah, yeah. And I liked it, how it worked, because you don't have any cards at the beginning, but you collect the gems, and then you get a few cards, and then, oh, now I've got some extra gems, so it really escalates nicely. Yes. And getting the different cards that will give you the kind of free gems that are always available. Mm -hmm. That's kind what of, I mean, yeah. Yeah, kind of almost like engine building a little bit. Yeah. Yes, very cool. I enjoyed it a whole lot more than I thought I was going to. Mm -hmm. Enough that if we got a chance to trade and get it, I would want it in the collection. You wouldn't want to pay money for it? Maybe. Maybe a good deal. Yeah. I'd pay money for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Splendor. Yep. What's uh, the next one we played? The next one we played was my choice that I really wanted to play, and that was Spectre Ops. And I had absolutely no interest in playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, there's a lot of buzz around it. If a friend had it and they asked, do you want to play it? I'd be like, yeah, I'll play. Yeah. Um, we don't have any hidden movement games. Uh, I don't think we've ever really actually played any hidden movement games. I remember trying to play Nuns on the Run once while we were at Halcon in the games room, and it was so loud, and it was just such a new concept that I couldn't concentrate enough to read the rule book. Yeah. So we didn't even get a chance to play that. No. But Spectre Ops was kind of interesting, actually. Yeah? I like... See, I played The Hidden Person. Yes. Which was better for me than trying to control two different people. Yes. Because we were playing a two-player game. Yep. So I, I did like the pad of paper, and I showed the whole board, and I got to, like draw like my little path out that was interesting did you find that like was there a lot of tension or stress about being the invisible person or did you feel like it's okay most of the work is going to be on on justin no. because I, he doesn't see any of this information that i'm holding no it was tense for me because the very first move i made like you went in that direction too and i was like <laughs> do i keep going or do i double back because it was my very first turn nice so on my second move i was like no i think i'm better off to try to double back <laughs> anyway i think because that made basically lost me a whole two turns yeah 
because I ended up back at, at the start. Okay. Pretty much. It's so, interesting because I, we've watched a lot of videos on it because I keep thinking about this game and wondering, am I going to like it? And I'm intrigued by it. So I, I got a lot of kind of um, strategy tips uh, from watching the game being played. And a lot of the strategy was you're not running after the agent trying to catch them. What you're trying to do is predict where they are, where they're going to go, and like develop kind of a net to yeah, capture well, them. You must have watched way too many videos on it then because <laughs> you were really good at it. All right, awesome. Um, one of the things about playing Inspector Ops, which after multiple playthroughs would kind of lose this, but the fact that we'd never played before and I didn't take a look at any of the equipment means that as soon as you played a card and you didn't have to reveal it, I had absolutely no idea what just happened. Yeah, that would put you at a little bit of a disadvantage. Yeah. It could have been anything like, I just teleported to the other side of the world and you don't even know. And I just had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> See, and I took two cards that were the same. I don't know if that's allowed in the rules. We couldn't find it in the rules fast enough to like make a decision on that. But I think that hurt me too. Okay. Like I should have had, because I took the, I think it was called Adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So I could move six spaces instead of four. Wow. And I thought, well, if I ha if he's right on my tail, that'll give me a little bit better of a chance to get away. Yeah. But <clears throat> looking back on it now, I think I would I should have taken. Well, and I had my character special power. Yep. And then two extra cards that were adrenaline. I should have taken a smoke bomb or something. Yeah. And there's a lot of trickiness with the agent on. Ending your turn in a space that is out of line of sight. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the very last move you did was you should have ended it maybe one space back. Because then I wouldn't have seen you. But I was I kept thinking I'm going to chance it because I need to get over there faster. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I took that one extra square. Yeah. Yeah. So it was interesting. Um, I liked it. It, I didn't like it as much as I thought I was going to like it. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of that is going to be um, you need a bunch of players. The more yeah. people you can play, the better. Especially when you get like the five-player game and one of the hunters that's is how, a, a traitor. Yeah, that's how I want to play it. Yeah. And one of our friends just got it, so we're going to be able to try it out. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be good. Yeah. We'll try to... Maybe we should twitch that. And I actually... Yeah. It was more fun than I thought it was going to be. See, the theme throws me off. Okay. I like the cyberpunk stuff. Meh. Yeah. Yeah. It does make me interested in trying out Letters from Whitechapel, mm -hmm. which uh, a friend but of ours has. is that like a scary theme? Well, you're just hunting down Jack the Ripper. I don't like Jack the Ripper. He was way too mean. Well, that's why you're the police. You're hunting him down. Yeah, I don't want to think <laughs> about him ever. Oh, okay. It also makes me interested in Fury of Dracula. Yeah, well, Dracula's creepy, too. And it also makes me interested in trying out Nuns on the Run. <laughs> See, I think the theme of that one is more funny. Yeah. Like a funny kind of silly theme. Yeah. yeah. We could pretend Dracula is like Count... Um, a Chocula. Yeah, Count Chocula. Or the Count from Sesame Street. <laughs> one <cookie>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. There you go. Anyway, it, it makes me interested in other hidden movement games because we don't yeah, have any. exactly. Yeah, and it is intriguing. But also, probably hidden movement games don't work too perfectly with just two players. It's true. Maybe that's why we don't gravitate towards those. And it definitely makes me want to try them before I run out and buy any of them. Yeah, for yep. sure. Yeah. It's always best to try before you buy. Yeah. So that was game number two. Game number three was? Mysterium. Nice. And this wasn't the English version, this was the imported Polish version. Right. And we have an actual <clears throat> run-through of one game from the cafe on our video because it only took us nine minutes to play. Right. And the box is 60 minutes. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, because we watched another video and they said there's different versions of the game and each version has a different set of rules. Yeah. So... I don't know what version rules we were playing with, but... It was the version that was with the... It didn't come with the box. It was something that they had printed off. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't remember what it was. It was an English version. And I've seen other videos from other reviewers that say there's a couple of different variant versions of the rules, so... Yeah. 
Uh, we played it correctly according to the rules we had read. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it took nine minutes. Right. So what do you think of Mysterium? I liked Mysterium. Yeah? And I always thought, how, how can people just just off say, like, oh, it's a mix-up between Dixit and Clue? But, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got uh, colorful, artistic cards that can be interpreted in many different ways. That you're using to communicate with the players. Right, takes it. And the players are trying to figure out who murdered the person, uh, where. Where they were and with what. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. It is. But. <laughs> but no, like, rolling dice to move. No. Foolishness. No. No. No, it's just you have so many rounds and that's it. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, you have a week. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I was concerned about with Mysterium, just in terms of are we going to buy this eventually, is the new English version. I had heard a rumor that they were going to change the artwork. And there were some people having concerns about the art, new artwork being... Um, not as creepy or something. Yeah, not as like... It's not gory artwork in any way, but it is no. kind of creepy moody it's moody yeah yeah interesting artwork that's awesome and fits the theme and i didn't want it to be like like i don't know just you didn't want them to make it foo-foo or anything yeah exactly so since then uh, i've read on the board game geek a designer diary about the making of the new english version of mysterium uh they're changing a couple of the rules there's going to be one rule set which will be interesting mm-hmm uh, the artwork for everything except for the dream cards is being upgraded, updated, and made better. So the art that I don't want to change isn't going to change. And all the rest of the art is made better. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the game. I had fun with it too. Yeah. And it's going to be a great game with more than yes. two players. A great like party cooperative deduction game. Right. Yeah. I think that's going to be fun. And I find it... Like, the deduction is a little on the light side. It's more interpretive. Yeah, that's which true. Which I kind of like. It's true. And it helps that, you know, when me and you are playing... Oh, we, yeah, we we're tend kind to think, of off one mind. Yeah, we think along similar terms. Yeah. Or lines. So reason. maybe that's why it only <laughs> took us nine minutes to maybe. play it. <laughs> um, although we played it on the easiest level. Yeah, that's right, because there's different we difficulties. We won both times, but the first time we won on the very last round, and the mm -hmm. second time we second to last round right so it would get interesting and more difficult on higher difficulty levels right yeah. anyway as an introduction to the game it was awesome it was yeah can't wait for it to come out and so we can grab it yeah i would buy this one yep let's see what's the next one we trade uh, i tried game number four was traders of osaka i really liked that game yeah uh, we watched stuff on it. It looked very interesting. I was very interested to try it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only kind of weird thing about it is the scoring rules. And it sounds like a bunch of strange, complicated math. And after you do it once, it's not. No. Yeah. I mean, it is a little... I don't know why they set it up that way. It is a little convoluted. But yeah. it works. It works. Like, yeah. And yeah, like you said, once you do it once... Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's how you do it. Yeah. And it's not that hard. And the weird thing was is I found myself after doing it like two or three times, I didn't have to do all the math in my head. It was just intuitive. If this is how it works, then okay, I just scored two, two points. Yeah. Like it just, it became intuitive after you did it a couple times. Yeah. Which is weird. That seems like it's counterintuitive, but it wasn't. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Um, I really like the new version, like the Osaka. It's pretty. Yeah. yeah. The artwork's nice. It looks good. Uh, the cards are awesome. The components are awesome. And this was like your insta-buy from the whole day. That was the favorite game that I played the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. And that's evident in the fact that we already got a copy. <laughs> right. We haven't played it yet, yeah. but yeah. yeah, we just got our box last night and yeah. yay, it's in our collection. Yep. And the, the thing I liked about it the most was how the ships move. Yes, there, it's very tricky, and there's a lot of very tricky timing involved. It's timing. You're manipulating yeah. Yeah, how the ships sail into port. Yeah. And then people are betting on which ships are going to make it. Yeah. So it's really kind of... There's a little bit of take that to it. 
Yes. So if you don't like that, because you try to position the ships so that the cards you have in front of you are going to be the ships that are going to make it, but say the cards your opponent has in front of them aren't the same cards that you have, so then you try to sink those ships. And it's, it it's can be marvelous. Very, it can be very difficult because it's, it's all based on the cards that are available. And if you yeah. just like I needed the sh the green ship to go two spots to get into port, so it wasn't going to get sunk. Mm -hmm. And every time two green cards came out for me to be able to buy, you would grab one of them, mm -hmm. which would just make one card available. And, and if I it bought would only it, go one spot. And it would always cause another ship to go into port, which would cause the green one to sink. Yeah. Very, very it's tricky, very manipulative. Very satisfying when yeah. you can pull that off. And a yeah. very, like, like, a lot of depth of strategy and tactics, but at the same time, it's... You could set this game up and start playing in like three minutes and it's it's going to be like a half hour game. Yeah. 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 Which is awesome. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And that's why it's in our collection. Yeah. So what's the next game we played? Uh, after that we tried Nations the Dice Game. And uh, I was interested in this game because I like Civ building games, but we don't have a lot of Civ building board games. No, we don't. At all. Mostly because they're these massive, huge, fiddly um, things. And there's usually a whole lot of uh, people on the board, war stuff. Yeah, war stuff. And we're not really into that so much. Yeah. Um, a lot of them have uh, the, the mechanism of, you know, all the technology is available. All the time. Or big tech trees. Yeah. And we're not fans of that. I mean, it works really, really good in a video game. Yes. I really enjoy playing them as a video game. Yeah, and I think it's because a lot of it is automated. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. So, um, Nations, when it came out, I looked at it and said, that looks interesting, and I'm probably never going to buy it. No, we watched quite a few videos on it, and there were pros and there were cons, and we just decided, yeah, ah, let's take a pass on that one. Yeah. But Nations, the dice game, looked like it was... Um, very minimalistic in terms of components. Yeah. Uh, it looked like you could set it up and start playing rather quickly. And I love the idea of starting off with a set of dice, and then as you upgrade aspects of your civilization, you trade in the so-so dice for specialist dice. Mm -hmm. That is really cool. Yeah, a dice upgrading kind of mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. And there's even a way in the in Nations the Dice game where... Um, you roll the dice, and then you use one of your so-so dice to pay for an upgrade. And that causes you to have to get rid of one of those so-so dice. You can get rid of the so-so dice you just used yeah. to get the new one, which means you're going to have an even better turn that round. Right, because then is... you get to the dice that you take into your pool, Yeah, you get to roll them and use them that round. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, it can chain or trigger lots of awesomeness for that mm -hmm. round. Yeah. So I really liked that idea and was interested in trying it and found that it worked really well. I liked <clears throat> the getting the dice and upgrading the dice, but I found managing my the cards that I was getting got a little bit overwhelming. Okay. Just, you know, those little cards that were in the middle that you used to build up your civilization. It was hard for me to get ones that synergized well together. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, I was more interested in the dice part of it, and then I kind of didn't really focus that well on getting the little cardboard cards that worked good together. You mean like the tokens? No, like... The upgrades. The upgrades. Okay. And like the uh, the wonders and I the gotcha. leaders. Yeah. And, but like the upgrades on your board that mm -hmm. gave you the new dice, I was okay with that. That's like trying to get the leaders and the oh, okay. and the wonders to all work well together. Yeah. Give me some extra points. That part didn't work out so well for me. Okay. Well, it was the first time we played. Yeah. This to me was the insta buy of 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 the games we played. Wow. Yeah. I'm like sixty five percent convinced that I want this game. Okay. Well, we definitely need to play it again. <laughs> uh, one of the things I really loved about it was the fact that. It takes about it takes about five to ten minutes to set up, mm -hmm. maybe less once you're used to it, but the setup is not like extensive. No, and the gameplay is fast. Yeah, I think you could get like a game of this done in thirty minutes. I think it's a filler game. Yeah, 
which I think I is think amazing. Because I have actually a list right here. I'm going to cheat and look at it. And I think it actually is on the list of fillers. No, maybe it's not. I could see how like somebody would look at it and not think filler. But if you if you define a filler game as just strictly time. Time only. 30 minutes to set up and play and put away. Right. This is like right on the edge. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, and of course, if you're playing with more than two people, that's going to change. I think yeah, more than two people might push it. Longer. Yeah. Yeah, but with two players, yeah. you can definitely play it within 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and I, I found it very satisfying, the upgrading of my civilization, the escalation of what I could do. It was a really good Civ building game. Um, now, the original game, Nations, uh, a lot of people will kind of criticized it because you start off with a civilization and you could take wonders or leaders that had absolutely nothing to do with that civilization. Yeah, they weren't connected yeah. like historically. And and the same thing happens in the dice game. Yeah. But who cares? But in a dice <laughs> it was game just fun. it's all random. Yeah. Anyway, so it doesn't seem to be as big of a deal. Yeah. And I think maybe that criticism is for people who are looking for like an a historically accurate civ game. Which I'm not interested in whatsoever. I just no. want to build my civilization the best I can do, even if it makes no historical sense, because I don't care. Right. Yeah. I mean, if it was all made up leaders and all yeah. made up places and all made up wonders and all made up whatever else, you're not going to know if you're putting the Great Wall of China in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. It could be easily rethemed in some kind of space sci fi theme. Or something. And it's like. Instead of civilizations, it's worlds and it's but See, aliens. that would be more work because you have to invent all that stuff. True. Because this way you can just take things that already are real. Yeah. And Anyway. Anyway, I loved it. I need to get it soon. Nation's okay. the dice game. We'll see. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get it. We're definitely getting it at some time okay. in the future. Okay. We will get it. Okay. Yeah. I don't need to run out and get it right now, but I'm going to have this. Well, I a math shall trade. own it. <laughs> a math trade would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so that was the next game uh, was Patchwork. Patchwork, which Justin, I think he heard of the game before, but yes. he really didn't know too much about it. Nope, didn't know anything else uh, at all about it. And when I looked on the box and said, "This is Uwe Rosenberg," and it's not about farming. <laughs> what, we, what? What? What is this? And isn't it just a two-player only? Yeah, it's a puzzle game. Yeah, about like making a quilt or something. Yeah, a patchwork piece. Yeah, and your currency is buttons. Which yeah. is really cool. And it's you're fitting stuff together sort of Tetris style because their pieces are like in um, Tetris -y. Shaped, yeah. yeah. Um, you create this very interesting, almost like a rondelle of patches around the board. Right. And you can jump one to three spaces and that's the piece that you have to buy. So th there's some very interesting choices there. Yeah, and... Some of the pieces will generate you buttons and some of them won't. Yep. But some of them you need to take because you have to fit them in. Yeah. Because you get points. Or no, how does it work? Um, when you get, what, a 9x9 nine nine or something? Yes, if you fill in a certain area completely within your, your quilt, yeah. uh, you that get a ends. bonus. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's certain... There's certain spaces on the scoreboard that when you reach them, you get these little tiny one by one patches, and there's only so many of them, and you yeah. really need to get those to fill in. Yes, and sections guess of your who board. got a whole bunch of yeah, them? Yeah, I got all but one. Yeah, I only got one. <laughs> Which was awesome. But see, I had, I did not have a good strategy. No. No, I thought I would work from the middle out. Oh yeah, yeah. It didn't work at all. No. And you started in a corner or something. Yeah, I started in a corner and started working across the board. Yeah, and that is the way to go. Yeah. And it's funny because one of the very last pieces I put in, uh, I put in the center of the section of my board that was left open, thinking I could fill in the two sides. And ex exactly what happened was was the same as you. Is suddenly I had these two pieces that needed very specific pieces to fill. And there and they just were none wasn't. Of, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you kind of work in a corner mm -hmm. and leave as much open space as possible yes. to fill in. And then just, yeah, very tactically choose your pieces. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting. 
Uh, I wouldn't say I'd have to run out and buy it or anything, but if you sat down and said, hey, you want to play Patchwork? I'd be like, yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm the same way with it. I didn't I didn't fall in love with it as much as I thought I would. Yeah. I thought it was going to be one of those really epic two-player games. That was interesting. It was interesting, yeah. All right, so the next game we played was... Ink and Gold. Ink and Gold. And we played it because we've been requested to do a top five or so list of filler games. And we don't have a lot of fillers. No, so we wanted to play a few fillers while we were up there. Yep. And this one, I was just surfing around trying to figure out good filler games to try. This was on a lot of lists. Yeah. It's an older one. Yep. And uh, so we ended up playing it. It was very interesting. I liked it. I, I enjoyed it. Um, it was very push your luck. Yes. That was pretty much the whole game. The main mechanic. Just push your luck. Yeah. And, well, actually, I suppose push your luck as well as a little bit of, like, sort of reading the other players yeah. or bluffing because you're trying to figure out, are the other players going to leave now and take the treasure and leave you in the temple? Or are they going to stay in the temple with you? Do you leave now and try to steal those treasures out from under them? Or you stay in the temple to try to push your luck to get more? Mm -hmm. Very, very tricky kind of figuring that stuff out. Yeah. Especially when the artifacts come out. Because if you're the only person to leave the temple and there are artifacts on the way out, you just get them. And that's huge. Yeah, because they're worth more points. Yeah. So it was very interesting. Um, it had these little cards that you bent to make tents. Which and I that was just dumb. I didn't like the card tents. No. No, because, I mean, the copy that we were playing there was so old and worn out that the card tents didn't stand up. No. There's got to be a, a different way. A much better way of doing it other than that. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it was just a, a draw bag or something. Something, yeah. Yeah, yeah a draw bag would be Cause, fun. Yeah, because, I mean, that could be your treasure sack or whatever. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but the game itself was neat. It was fun. It was quick and easy. Mm -hmm. You could play with a bunch of people and it'd be Didn't a it, real easy filler. Like up to eight or something like that. Something like that, yeah. A yeah. lot of people. Yeah. So it would make a really good kind of party game. Yeah. Plus a lot of it, it's all, a lot of it is simultaneous, a lot of it is simultaneous play. Mm -hmm. So everyone like picks whether or not they're staying or leaving and then y'all flip and reveal and then y'all take your treasure. Yeah. And then you just keep going. So it wouldn't take... A whole lot longer when you're playing with more people. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, that's cool. And it's kind of interesting too. There's a little bit of card counting in there because the curses or whatever that come up. Yeah. They some get removed. Yeah, there's only three of each one, and it's not the first one that pops up that causes you to lose. It's the second one. The second one makes you so scared you have to. Yeah. yeah. And then when that happens, you take it. You take one of that kind of curse out of the deck so then there's only two left right so yeah there is a little bit of like what is the likelihood of that mummy coming up a second time i'm mm -hmm. gonna keep going yeah oh it just popped up now i just got scared yeah. and i get nothing exactly <laughs> yeah so very interesting yeah uh and then our final game of the day was agricola all creatures big and small there we go two player uwe rosenberg agricola mm -hmm. which was interesting i've been wanting to try this for a while me too, because it was designed specifically for two players. Yes. Which Agricola is not. No. It's not a great two player game. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, plus it's, uh, there's lots of bits to it, but I mean, nothing near the massive scale of bits that you find in Agricola or Caverna. No, so, there's not. But there's still a lot of bits. Yeah, a lot of bits for a two-player game, but awesome not... Awesome anime meeples. Yeah, but yeah. not overwhelming. No. Like, to set up Caverna is a very long process. Mm hmm So, another reason why I wanted to check it out. Yeah. Um, so, what did you think? I liked it. I liked that it was only so many rounds. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. So, you're trying quick. to maximize what you're doing in those yep. rounds. Yeah. Yeah. And it kind of felt a little solitaire-ish. A little Only bit, yeah. because you're so focused on what you have to do in that certain amount of time that you're kind of not too worried about what you're, the opponent's doing. Because you only have so much time to deal with. Yeah, that's true. Um, there was a lot of different things you could do. 
and they seem to all work fairly well. Mm -hmm. I find that in Agricola, I'll be going along, following my strategy, doing my thing, and there'll be one place on the board that has collected so many pieces over the rounds that it would just be stupid not to grab it. Right. I didn't find that happen in this one. No, it didn't. Yeah, and there was an interesting thing where a lot of the a lot of the spaces, if there was nothing there, it got something really good. But as soon as there was something there, the something that was really good, it got something that wasn't as good every round. Mm -hmm. That was really well done. Yeah, I really like that because then it didn't become this overwhelming spot that I mean really forget my strategy I'm just gonna have to take that because it's stupid not to yeah do. all those horses yeah. yeah yeah so that was very cool um, there was only four special buildings in the whole game mm -hmm. which as... if you only had the base game yeah. you probably wouldn't be able to play it very many times because of that yes but it makes it really nice as an like on entry yeah. To get into the game because you don't have you're to worry not... about figuring all those buildings out. Right. You're not overwhelmed yeah. with it right at first. So that's kind of neat. For, like, get the base game, play it several times, and then get an expansion and slowly introduce new buildings. Right. Especially if you really love it. Yeah. Because it's one of those games that you will get better at each time you play. Yeah. Because the very first time I played it, kind of felt like I was just bumbling around just trying to figure it out. Yeah. But it was interesting enough that I would want to play it again. Yeah, I liked it. Um, I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Agricola. Me too. But I think it felt a lot like Caverna to me. Did it? Because Caverna has the buildings. Agricola is more focused on those cards. Mm -hmm. I almost wished it had like some small like Agricola-based card play at the beginning. Hmm. Because I really like that about Agricola. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was interesting. I liked it. Yeah, I would want to play it again. Yeah. I would trade for it. Yeah, trade for it, definitely. Matt traded that up. Yep. yep, for sure. So that was after that. We had been at the board game cafe for a, over seven hours. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which but was it didn't fine. feel like seven hours. No, like it didn't seem like we were there forever. It was just... No. It was just... We're tired and I, oh wow, it's because we've been here for seven hours. Yeah, because I was up for playing more games, but then it was like, I don't think I'm up for le learning another new game today. <laughs> but I would have stayed to play more if I could have. Yeah, that was very fun. Oddly enough, we had planned out our uh, vacation, and then after all the stuff was planned out and we had our hotel room and everything, then the boardroom game cafe decided to do a math trade that week. But it was at the end of the week. Yeah. So instead of changing our plans, we, we, we stuck to our plans, got into the math trade anyway, and later on that same week had to drive back to Halifax to go back to the boardroom ga game cafe in order to take part in the math trade. Right. And while we were there, we played two more games. We did. Yeah. Now we didn't have our camera, we didn't take any video, so did you want to kind of follow up with the information on those two games? Sure, we can. Okay. So we played two games, and the first one was... Rise of Augustus. Rise of Augustus. Or Augustus. Or just Augustus. What's yeah. the new one? Is it Rise? I, I think so. Um, I get confused. I can't remember. Augustus. Anyway, yeah. It has been described as gamers bingo. Yes. Which... I will disagree with that. You will disagree with that. It is kind of like bingo. I I will agree with that. You're pulling something out of a bag and you're going chariots. Who's yes. got a chariot? Yes, that's like bingo. Yes. But there's no bingo doppers involved. No, it's set collection. <laughs> yes. Set collection. Yep. Bingo. B15 is one. It's not set collection. No. Unless you count all the, all the letters. Possibly. You could, I guess, argue that fact if you really wanted to. But anyway, it's more of a set collection. Yep. And special powers. Yes. That combine and they escalate and to get you points. Yeah. And it's been out for a little while, mm -hmm. and we've kind of heard a lot about it, and it hasn't really gone away or faded away. No, it hasn't. And everyone, a lot of people will say, I really shouldn't like this game as much as, as I do because it's bingo. Yeah. Well, it's not just, like I said, it's not just. It's no, no, way no. more than that. There's a whole lot of really good gamer game mechanisms in there Yeah. that 
are almost more important than what seems like the focus of the game, which is the pulling something out of the bag and and yelling. Yes, it out. you articulated that way better than I did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was really fun. It was neat. I enjoyed it a lot. I really liked it. It yeah. looked good. The art was cool. Mm -hmm. um, it was very um, satisfying. Getting some really hard cards finished and finding some synergies between cards to help me yeah. get more harder cards completed for my sets. And also something that I don't know that's stressed a lot in a lot of the videos we watched, like the stuff that you're pulling out of the bag, there's some really rare ones. Yes. And then there's some really common ones. So you're also kind of playing, it's a little bit of a gamble too. It's like you know you're quite close to the end of the game, but if you finish a card, you get to choose another card. And you're looking, it's like, really, am I going to be able to get those pinks I need? Because that would really work with this set, and it would give me a lot of points. And Oh, whatever, I'm taking it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's got some really interesting decisions, like, quite near the end of the game. Yeah. And about the whole, like, um, I have so many cards in control, like, when to take those special score tokens. Yep. Good decisions there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was excellent. I would like this in our collection sometime. Yeah, I would I would definitely trade for it. Yep. And if I saw a really good deal on it, I would pay money for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I could see this being a great game for when we have people over because it's not complicated no. to play, but there's a lot of in-depth strategy. There is. Yeah. So like people who don't really necessarily want to strategize, they can still play it and get along fine. Yep. But for us gamers... You can really, there's a lot of meat down there under those yeah. cards that you can follow along with. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to play it. No, it was pretty fast, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't think it's filler length, though. No, no, it's definitely more than filler. It's a medium length game. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. Uh, and then after that, we tried Elysium. Mm hmm. And I wanted to try Elysium because the theme I like, I like that whole Greek mythology. It's yep. very cool. Um, I've heard it described as a unique blend of Abyss and Splendor, which was just weird, but okay. Um, I also like the customization because there's eight different decks of cards and you only combine five of them. Mm -hmm. So that sounds cool. Uh, I've also heard that there are some problems or some potential problems with the two-player game because not all, not all of the cards are going to come out. Right. But um, we also heard a recommendation, I believe it was by Rado, uh, who I said... Think, or no, it was Rado. It was Rado? Yeah. Or Joel? No, because it was his podcast we were listening to. Oh, okay, yeah. And he said that... Uh, I think it was a podcast or a video. Anyway, um, he said that if you play with the Oracle deck, which I can't remember which god that is, but if you play with that deck, you get to see some of the cards that are coming out next turn. Mm-hmm. And so we played with that deck, and the other four were from the starter uh, decks that they recommended. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. It was fun. The only thing, there's so many cards. Like, the more yeah. you play it, the easier you'll get. Yes. Because there's so many different cards, and the text on the bottom and how they work is very, very small. Yes. That's it the looks... only thing that, it was a little, it looked complicated. Yeah. And it looks very, like it almost is overwhelming the first, when you first look at those cards. Mm -hmm. But I found after the first round. Yeah, because then you kind of knew where your sets were headed. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a set collection game. So the ones that you needed to collect after, you kind of only had to deal with what those cards did. You could yeah. ignore the other cards. True. But I also found just like, even... Even not worrying about what I had or you had, but just what is the new stuff coming out. After that first round, the cards didn't look overwhelming. Like, oh man, how am I going to have to read all that stuff and figure out how that works? So I found going from, I have no idea what's going on to, okay, that card, I understand what that card does now. I yeah. found that was very quick. Yeah. But it looked like it wasn't going to be at first. No. Yeah. But definitely, if I played it two or three more times, it would be very snappy. Yeah, yeah. Like absolutely. quick, I mean. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. I like the buying thing. Like, I knew it was cool because I'd watched some videos on it. Yeah. With the three towers, you, or sorry, the four towers you have in the different colors. Yeah. And how 
the cards cost something, but you, that's not necessarily what you had to pay for it. Yeah. Because you could look ahead and kind of plan which pillars you wanted to hold on to for the cards coming up later. That's a good. Uh, that's a I good kind it. of puzzle. Yeah, it yeah. was a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. Which was neat. I really like the set collection stuff uh, because you're trying to either get um, uh, all the same number but in each different color or you're trying to get one, two, and three in the same color. That's kind of cool. Uh, I like that there's wild cards, but the wild cards subtract points at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. That was neat. And of course, I really enjoy cards like special powers. And of course, all the cards have special powers. Yeah. It's which yes can be overwhelming at first to understand them all yeah but again by the time we were done the first game i was like yeah, I'd, I'd rather be play that again right now yeah yeah i find it really interesting yeah this is one i would like to trade for this would be like a math trade mm -hmm. yeah i could definitely get that oh yeah or if it was like free shipping <laughs> <laughs> From... oh that that one game that yeah. you have to look for to get free shipping it's yeah. like it was oh, like, we that. need one game to get free shipping from Board Game Bliss. Hey, look, Elysium has free shipping. Done. We'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was very good. I liked it. Um, it was interesting hearing it being compared to a combination of Splendor and Abyss, because we had played Splendor, but we still haven't played Abyss. No. And I think where that came from is in, there's a point where you have to take your cards that give you all these special abilities and you have to put them into your legend. And when you put them into your legend, that means they're going to score you points, which is how you win the game. But then their special powers are gone. You don't have access to them anymore. Mm -hmm. And something very don't similar you, like that in Abyss. Don't you put them in your Elysium? Elysium, that's it, yeah. Because you're, Cause that's the name you're of, writing your legend in your Elysium. That, yeah, that's something the name like that. of the game. Yeah. Elysium. Yeah. yeah. So I like that. That was very neat. That kind of timing aspect. Do I get rid of this right now and not use its special power anymore? Or do I hold on to it and get the special benefit some more? But it's tricky, too, because you're only allowed to put so many cards down in that spot yeah. per round. Yeah. And I ran out of, like, there was one card left in my tableau or whatever that I didn't put. In the in Elysium? The, yeah. Yeah. I missed one because I didn't calculate correctly. Yeah. But... Um, it needs some more playthroughs because as good as that first playthrough was um, with some of the other decks, like even with that playthrough, there was some very kind of passive aggressive ways to mess mm -hmm. with each other. Yeah. Uh, but I've also heard that in some of the other decks, that passive aggressive can go more aggressive aggressive. Mm -hmm. And that's fine well, as yeah, long as you know about it. Each deck is themed after a different Greek god. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I bet Ares is kind of like in your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to definitely play it some more, but I really enjoyed it enough that I would definitely math trade for it right away. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'd be so, okay with that. Yeah. And it's funny, you were talking about changing our trip plans or whatever because of the math trade. Yep. I thought you were going to say about how on the day that we were in the boardroom game cafe, the East Link TV crew was there doing interviews. Yeah, thank goodness we did not change our plans because that was awesome. That was really cool. East Link TV is like the local cable provider in the Maritimes. Yep. And they have like their own channel and they do like their own like local TV shows and whatever. Mm -hmm. So they came to the boardroom to do an interview with the manager there and he just happened to mention that we have our own channel. And then they wanted to interview us, too. It was really exciting. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, we don't have cable, but I'm definitely keeping an eye on East Link's website mm -hmm. for when that show airs. Yeah. So I can maybe try to grab a copy of it. Well, I don't think you can do that, but we can definitely like go to someone yeah. who has and Watch use a it. VCR. Yeah. yeah, it'd be awesome. Yeah, because it's cool. It was kind of neat. Um, so... I think that's it for our first podcast. I think so. We can wrap it up for now. We don't yep. want these things to be crazy long. No, um, we're going to try to do more podcasts and set this up in conjunction with our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash sweethearts arrivals. Mm -hmm. You can check us out there. Yeah. And uh, we don't really have a format yet because this kind of, this was in conjunction with our summer special video. But uh, if you have any comments or suggestions on a format, 
you know, yeah. let us know. Um, and also we were listening to some and they take questions too. So yeah, absolutely. If you had questions or suggestions for anything for us to talk about. Yeah, just uh, you can send all those to sweetheartsorrivals at gmail.com. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll talk at you later. Later. Yeah.